Are you the kind of diver that when you stop moving, you have to do this with your hands to keep your body upright or to keep it from sinking? Or are you the type of diver that feels like they have to kick constantly because if you stop kicking, you will sink? If you're either of those types of divers, you do not have good buoyancy control. Or to be more specific, you don't have good control over your neutral buoyancy. On this episode, we're gonna talk more about buoyancy control, specifically neutral buoyancy, how to set and maintain your buoyancy at any depth. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. We're gonna continue our discussion today on the five basic principles of scuba diving, the five fundamentals, if you will. Those are weighting, trim position, buoyancy, propulsion, breathing, and breath control. We've already covered weighting and trim position. On the last episode, we talked about the theoretical discussion of Archimedes principle and how it relates to a diver and how we control our buoyancy. I also talked in that episode about how I thought about buoyancy control in terms of course control of your buoyancy and fine control of your buoyancy in terms of neutral buoyancy. What I mean by that is, as we learn from Archimedes' principle, there are two forces that are controlling your buoyancy. First, there is the downward force from your weight and the weight of your gear that is pressing down on the water. The second portion is the upward buoyant force that is being created by the volume or weight of water that you are displacing as a diver. So, when it comes to controlling neutral buoyancy, we have to balance that downward force from the weight of us and our gear against the upward buoyant force by the water that we are displacing. And the way that we can do that is by altering our volume. We are wearing one of these. This is a BCD. Or if you're a dry suit diver, you're wearing your dry suit. So the first portion of starting to control that neutral buoyancy or the course control is going to be altering the volume of either your BCD or your dry suit by adding air to your BCD or dry suit, you're increasing your volume, therefore you're displacing more volume of water, displacing more weight of water, and therefore you're increasing the upward buoyant force. That is going to start to arrest your descent in the water and overcoming that downward force that's being created by the weight of you and your gear. So we're going to inflate partially our BCD. That is going to be the initial course control. The second portion of controlling your neutral buoyancy is going to be through breathing and breath control. And in fact, when I dive, when I get to a specific depth that I want to dive at, I am going to set and forget the volume within my BCD. Primarily during my dive, I am going to alter my position in the water using breath control, either up or down. So today we're going to talk about some of the practical skills that you're going to learn as a new scuba diver or if you're an established scuba diver, what are some of the things that you can continue to practice to really hone in and perfect that neutral buoyancy technique. So next up, let's get in the pool. We're going to test out a neutral buoyancy skill that we're all going to learn as new scuba divers in order to start to control our position in the water. So yes, yeah, some divers will see that I am kneeling here on the bottom. Oh my goodness. Well, for new divers, this is how we're going to begin to establish their neutral buoyancy. First, we're going to dump all of the air out of our BCD and I'm gonna lay flat on the bottom of the pool. As you can see, I got my two legs extended out behind me in kind of a V position from behind this is going to be the position where your fin tips are going to stay in contact with the bottom of the pool. I'm going to take a big breath. I haven't added any air to my BCD. Nothing happens. I don't lift up. So I'm going to add a small amount of air to my BCD and then I'm going to take another large breath and I begin to rise up a little. As I breathe out, I'm going to start to sink again. I'm going to become negatively buoyant. Again, using my course control method, adding a little bit of air to my BCD, another big breath, and begin to rise up. And exhaling, I can then begin to sink back down. And what we can do with this now is begin to play with that position using your breath control only. I no longer have to mess with my BCD, 
So by breathing in, I can rise up, and then by exhaling fully, I can sink back down. And so using large volumes of air in and out of my lungs, I can gradually play with that position up and down. And from the side, this is how it looks. Our feet will remain on, in contact with the bottom of the pool. And I'm simply going to use my breath to control my position up and down in the water column. Lastly, we're going to start to reduce the volume. Slowly reduce the volume and control your position so you remain in a static position. Towards the end of that fin pivot skill, the key there is to slow down your breathing. We don't have to fully exhale and fully inhale. If we do that, we're going to consistently bob up and down. Towards the end, you can see that I slowed my breathing, I decreased the volume in and out of my lungs, and so I could establish that position and maintain it without bobbing up and down. That is key. After perfecting that neutral buoyancy technique in the pool, the next step is we're going to learn how to hover. This is the hand signal for hover. Some people like to use a flat palm. And that's where we're going to take the next step. We're going to leave contact with the bottom, be it the pool or the sea bottom, and start to be neutrally buoyant, completely contained within that water column. I want to introduce you to my friend Aubrey. Aubrey is a phenomenal diver. She's an instructor down on St. Croix with Sweet Bottom Dive Center. Aubrey is also a technical diver and a rebreather diver. She knows her stuff. So let's watch Aubrey do her thing. So Aubrey's going to show us a hover and very much like the initial fin pivot, we're gonna make sure we dump all the air out of our BCD, exhale fully. And here it's gonna look very much like that fin pivot. She's actually gonna lay down. Some divers will stay on their knees. In her case, she wants to be horizontal. She's going to use that course control of adding a small amount of volume of air to her BCD and taking large breaths to begin to rise up and she's consistently and slowly adding air to our BCD. One mistake we see a lot of new divers making is just adding too much air and suddenly they're too buoyant. As you can see here, nice horizontal trim position, much like a technical diver with the knees bent. She's fighting a little bit of current, not using her arms or legs to maintain her buoyancy. And here she is in a vertical position maintaining her position again with only breath control a few inches above the seabed bottom. You can try this in a variety of positions. You can even try this in a completely upside down position with your head down, feet up, again only using breath control to maintain your position. So as you can see from that portion of the video, it's a lot of fun practicing your neutral buoyancy in any position. I love to just go out and practice that in a vertical and upside down position on my back. That is the beauty of scuba diving. You can be in any position in three dimensions underwater controlling your buoyancy all the while. Some additional tips for you divers out there. Remember, as we descend in water, that water pressure is going to increase. Therefore, at a increased depth, we have to increase the volume of our BCD to displace more water to overcome that downward force on us to establish a greater upward force. And lastly, during your ascent. As you ascend in the water column, as pressure decreases, you're going to see an increased volume within your BCD. Remember those pressure volume relationships. And so what that means is that upward buoyant force on you increases because as the volume of your BCD increases, you're displacing more weight of water, the upward buoyant force is greater, and you will ascend faster and faster. We all want to control our ascent rate. And so if you were diving at 60 feet or 18 meters, and you want to ascend up to your 15 feet or 5 meter safety stop, you are going to have to vent a little bit of gas out of your BCD as you ascend to that 15 feet stop. So what we want to do during dives is to control our buoyancy from the surface where we're positively buoyant, when we make ourselves negatively buoyant to begin to descend, to where we make ourselves neutrally buoyant to arrest our descent and go diving, to where we have to control our buoyancy as we begin to rise back up to our safety stop by venting a little bit of air to decrease the volume of our BCD, 
and ultimately become neutrally buoyant again at that 15 foot or 5 meter safety stop. Buoyancy is critical to the skills of scuba diving. So now that we've covered the first three basic principles of scuba diving, the next thing we're going to talk about is how we're going to move ourselves through the water. What kick technique or what propulsion method are we going to use to get ourselves from point A to point B. So on the next episode, we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of different kick techniques that you can use to look like a pro scuba diver. Click the link right here to go to the next episode. And as always, friends, thanks for watching and dive safely.